Okay, no. Hold on. No. This can't be where we're going. We are not- What? Oh. Is that the train of everyone else's theories I've been stubbornly refusing to get on board? Well, back the hell up, train, because I'm not ready to go. Man, what a thing to leave us on for a month. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, let's recap this chapter. Beginning at Akiho's place, where she's explaining to Kaito that she had a dream about a mirror that can copy magic. Once again, making a connection to a Sakura adventure we saw in the previous chapter. She also mentions hearing a voice saying, you cannot go back. To which Kaito responds by bringing up the idea of a reverse dream. Basically the opposite of a prophetic dream. Hold on to that idea, because I'm going to come back to it. We cut to the next day where life carries on as normal. Sakura goes to school, and Kiro flashes back to where Kiro and Yue decide to tell Sakura what they learned. Oh wait, no. They decide to not tell her what they learned. I bet Kiro sees the news every day and sees that it might be raining and then he doesn't tell Sakura. After all, you wouldn't want to cause her any undue stress. Throughout the day, we get hints that maybe reality itself is falling apart, as Sakura very briefly falls into the dream state again, and she also hears the voice that says, you can't go back. One interesting thing to note, it loses this aspect in English, but in Japanese, the specific pronoun for you that they use is omai, which is something that someone polite or friendly wouldn't be using. So I guess we can rule out Ghost Narashiko. But now we get to the big parts. Surprise! Sharon has the Sakura cards! Everyone was right on this one. Sharon has not only been using magic that's like the Cloud cards, like I sorta of theorized, he actually has them, tucked away in his bear. How? Well, we don't know the specifics exactly, but I guess this does explain why the anime saw it absolutely necessary to retcon the bears into the story. Sharon explains to the cards, or rather to the audience, that he was able to use the bears to preserve the Sakura cards, not steal them. Regardless of the verb you want to use, it's apparently really taxing on him, and is something that Ariel advised against. The anime actually made a lot more hints to this, moments like episode 14 where we see Sharon doing his little marble seance, and then later in the episode casting time. There were also episodes like the sports episode where we see Sharon cast a fire spell that looks a lot like Fiery, and in the Blaze episode where we see Windy's form clearly visible. All this, allegedly, is an effort to protect Sakura, and Sharon's language seems to imply that he's working with the cards, not using them. He did kidnap them, for lack of a better word, but I guess it's implied off screen he has briefed them on what's going on, so I guess we're going to have to wait a little longer to understand what that means. And speaking of things to understand, I guess I'm ignoring the big thing. Sharon is the cloaked figure! In Sakura's dreams. That's a very important distinction, let me explain. Right before this page, we see Akiho in her room trying on her robes, while over on the other page, Sharon is cavorting with the Sakura cards. When Akiho puts on her robes, she gets all sleepy-eyed like she's going into a trance. Follow along to the next pages for a big reveal of Sharon. look who else is sleepy-eyed. So what does this mean? Personally, I'm trying to give Sharon some credit and assume that things are not what they seem. Remember at the beginning of the chapter where Kaito explains reverse dreams, where something that happens in a dream means that the opposite will happen in real life? Well, my take on that concept being introduced is that things are not as they appear in this situation. Maybe this isn't Sharon. Maybe this is... Oh god. Oh no, please don't be a clone. No, no, I don't want to read Tsubasa again. He can be Sharon, just don't do clones again. Clamp, how can you do this to us? It's a month before the next issue and the anime is going to end in two episodes. That's not fair to end the anime first. Right? But hold on. If the original finale aired March 21st, 2000, the last issue of the manga was released in... July of 2000? That's counting this as one new chapter per month and the only break being between the Cloud Arc and the Sakura Arc. I can't find a proper list of Nakayoshi releases. But this does show that the original anime ended before the original manga ended and they were... pretty close. They shaved a few details, but they were similar. You know, I don't know where the original series was at this point, but the anime right now has two episodes to resolve. Give Sakura the clock. Sorry, I mean key. Capture mirror. Explain Sharon's thing. Explain Toya. And explain everything related to Akiho, Kaito, and Momo. And you wasted episode 19 reading a book about foxes. Look, a typical anime episode can fit three chapters worth of manga into it comfortably, and the anime is currently only two chapters behind, so I guess the math says that this can work out, and I'm trying to have faith, but... Wow, Clamp, you're really cutting it close on this one. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next two weeks while I wait for the anime to finish, but it's gonna be nothing compared to waiting for how the manga ends. Which, if I do that math from earlier in reverse, then we have about four months worth of chapters left. If the anime follows the story of the manga, then we only need to wait a week and a half to figure out what this means. And that's probably the most important thing. Stay tuned to find out. I'll be doing episode vlogs on those, as always. I just can't wait to find out. See you next time.